Hi, my name is April, and I'm the Peaceful Wife. Today, we are talking about marriage is not a group grade. You know, group projects were always my least favorite projects in school. I ended up just doing all the work because I had to have an A, of course, and I didn't trust other people to do the work, so I just did it all myself. Didn't learn a lot about teamwork, though, unfortunately, taking that approach. Um, in the Bible, God tells us that, this is Paul speaking in 1 Corinthians, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder. He's talking about sharing the gospel, building people's faith, and teaching them about God. And someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, his work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. If what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. If it is burned up, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. This is 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 15. Sometimes my husband likes to watch American Idol, and I think a lot of you are probably familiar with that show. Ultimately, it's about individual contestants trying to win the contest and be the next American Idol. But there is one point in the contest where they have to work as a group. And they are assigned groups where they have to choose a group. And they have to work together. They need to harmonize and choreograph and sound good together. But ultimately, the judges grade each of the contestants individually. So if one person in the group really messes up, forgets the words, forgets the dance lines, or has a horrible attitude and doesn't work hard, um, the others won't be graded on that. They'll be graded on their own performance. And it's going to be similar to that when we stand before God. I will stand alone. My husband is not going to be standing there. So sometimes I think... We think, well, if my husband sins against me, then I am totally justified to sin against him because look what he did. So now I can treat him however I want to. God doesn't work like that. I am still accountable not to respond in sin when I am sinned against. Jesus, of course, was sinned against a lot, but he did not respond with sin. And as a follower of Christ, I am to be filled with his spirit and I am supposed to have his power to respond the way he does. So I don't have an excuse. I am no longer a slave to sin if I have accepted Christ and he is my Lord and I have his spirit. I am now a slave to righteousness. So when my husband sins against me, that is a test. And if I respond with a horrible tone of voice, awful facial expression, contempt, hatred, bitterness, unforgiveness, pride, self-righteousness where I think I'm so much better than he is, I'm so much more mature than he is, I am so much closer to God than he is, um, or if I respond by living in constant worry and fear and doubt and I don't trust God and I don't um, take my problems to him and trust him with them. Those things are all sin. God wants me to love and honor him, respect him, and obey him no matter what my circumstances are and no matter what other people do. If you think about Jesus, he responded to people because of the character that's inside of him, not because of what they deserved. And that's the same with us. When my husband sins against me, I will be most tempted to sin against him, Gary Thomas talks about that in sacred marriage and in sacred influence, but that is a test. It's a chance for me to learn to respond in the power of God, for me to trust God and be the wife he wants me to be, and it may be that God uses my obedience and his spirit's power working in me to radically impact my husband. I can't change my husband, but God can, and if I'm cooperating with God, 
then I can get out of God's way and he can do the work. Now, there are times that I may need to address my husband's sin. There are times when I may need to respectfully, gently, lovingly confront him. If he is sinning, Matthew 18 talks about how to confront a brother who is sinning against us. Matthew 7, 1 through 5 says that first I need to look at the plank in my own eye and remove the plank from my own eye, look at my own sin, make sure that I've taken care of all of that and repented to God and to my husband before I try to take the speck out of my brother's eye. So I am accountable for my obedience to Christ, my sin, my responses, um, my attitudes, my motives. God looks at motives. My motives have to be to love and honor and please Jesus and to love other people. Anything that is not from those motives, anything that's not from faith, God says is sin. John chapter 14, Jesus says in verse 23 and 24, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. So if I'm not living in obedience to Christ about something, it means that I don't love Jesus. That's what he says. So it's important for me to love him. It's important for me to trust him and to obey him. And I can't do that by myself. I've got to have his spirit's power. In Luke chapter 6, 46 through um, 49, Jesus says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. And when a flood came, the torrent struck the house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. Jesus gives us the gift of eternal life. It's by grace. It's by faith. We can't earn it. Then once we accept that gift he gives us, then we live for him as if he is Lord because he is our Lord at that point. And when he is Lord, we say, yes, Lord. We don't say, no, Lord. When he asks me to do something, it's my job to say yes. And it's my job to present myself as a living sacrifice to him every single day, giving everything I have, all that I am, all that I could be, everything I own to him and say, I want your will. Your will be done, not mine. I can ask God for what I want, but ultimately I seek his will and his glory because that is my purpose in this life. He gave himself up entirely for me, and now I have the privilege and the joy of giving myself up entirely for him, for his glory. You can find me at my blog, www.peacefulwife.com.